Would I use a four, George asked, thank you for the $2, uh, sir. Would I use the four terabyte boot drive for games or data? Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Yes, I'd use it for both. If I would put a four terabyte boot drive in and maybe just that drive to start with, depending upon you know, your needs. Some of you want to have five games installed at once and you just play a couple of games at a time. Others want to install half your game library and you know, you're going to want two or three of them. I don't have, there's nothing wrong with running your games off the C drive. Um, it, the performance wise, there's no substantial difference. Uh, Windows and the modern drives are so fast. Putting both Windows and some of your games on the C drive is not an issue. But having that four gigabytes, uh, four, excuse, four gigabytes, you know, four gigabyte hard drives, I remember those days. Okay, that's been a while, 25 years. But four terabyte drives mean that you leave your other M.2 slots free for four or eight or 16 terabyte drives in the future. Don't laugh. If you build a new machine today, before that machine is obsolete, 16 terabyte NVMe drives will probably be reasonable. Just look five years ago. Five years ago, a 250 gig boot drive was reasonable. Today, two terabytes. Actually, two terabytes today is cheaper than 250 gigs was back then. Storage is a big, big deal. I mean, uh, shoot. For those of you who have followed my channel for a while, back in 2017, I built, um, I tend to name all the builds. That particular build was the Cadillac Platinum build because at the time it was pretty fancy. It had a $2,000 budget, and in $2,000 in 2017, you got, you got, it was an i7-8700K, 6 cores, 12 threads, on a Z370 motherboard. It had a 250 gig Samsung 960 Evo boot drive, and 16 gigs of RAM. That's all that fit in that budget and a 1080 Ti. Case, power supply, etc. 16 gigs of RAM and a 250 gig boot drive is all that fit in that budget. I, put, I had five SSDs in that machine. I had a pair of Crucial MX300s, which were an odd size. They were 750 gig. Yes, they did used to make 750, kind of a weird size. I had two of those in there. SATA drives, and I had a 480 gig A data something or other, and something else I can't remember at this point. I used to remember. I had five SSDs total, and they totaled up to like 2.5 terabytes total. And managing where games were installed, now I also had a hard drive in there as well, but managing where everything was installed sucked. And that's why I replaced it with the 2019 Stormtrooper build, which was a build on the channel. It was in the white, uh, be quiet case. That was an i9-9900K. Okay, actually, technically, it was an i7-9700K because it was an Intel-sponsored build and they paid me to do it. But I even said in the video, please don't do this. This is stupid. Build a 9900K. And ironically, they were okay with that. They, I, I ran that by them. I said, you know, you want a 9700K, and I'll put that in the title, but I'm going to say in the video, this is stupid. And they're like, that's fine. They were chill. I got to say, uh, I've done several sponsored things for Intel over the years, and they're remarkably chill about it. Even when I'm dissing their product, they really don't mind. It's funny. So, um... That was a 9900K, and I replaced my machine at home with that because I mean I, I had the build from the from the from the video, and that had a much better SSD arrangement. Um, that had that had I believe that had a one terabyte boot drive. You know what? That had six terabytes of SSD space. 
that had a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo. I don't think it was a plus, it was just a 970 Evo, one terabyte NVMe boot drive. It had a, I think it was a two terabyte NVMe drive and then a one terabyte SATA drive and then a two terabyte SATA drive. So there were two one terabyte drives and two two terabyte drives. So yeah, six terabytes. Going from 2.5 on five drives to six on four was a huge improvement. That was so much easier to work with for a while. Although everything is just continues to get bigger and bigger and more ridiculous. At the beginning of this year, I replaced that build with my current Ryzen 9 7950X. And that has a two terabyte boot drive only because I built it at the beginning of the year and prices were different, honestly, nine months ago. I mean, they really, the prices of SSDs have fallen through the floor. It has a two terabyte boot drive. It's got two four terabyte NVMe drives and two of the M.2 slots. I don't think all the, I think I've got one free M.2 slot on that. And I've got two SATA SSDs one, two, and one, four. I'd have to go downstairs and look at that. And then I've got a pair of 20 um, terabyte Seagate excess drives in there. So 40 terabytes of mechanical hard drive for just everything else. Um, and the funny thing is I'm sitting here thinking about the storage. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend 100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. I'm not 100% sure actually off the top of my head what's in there because there's enough that I don't have to care. And if you can afford it, not having to care is a beautiful thing. Being crunched on storage sucks not having to care, being able to just go, yeah, I got room. My goal with that build was to make it last five years. It's been a while since I've had a computer for five years. In fact, when's the last time? The longest lasted computer I've had in the past 10 years was my i7 4770K. I built that in 2013, long before, the YouTube channel was started in 2016. In 2013, I built a i7 4770K, which I've shown in videos in the past, I still have it. I'm glad I still have it. I, there's too many machines I don't have anymore. I'm glad I kept that one. I kept that for, for about three years until 2016. And then the first big build I did on the channel was the, um, the ultimate build, which was the Broadwell E, the i7 6800K, six core, 12 thread, HEDT on the X, X99 motherboard. But I kept the 4770K for personal use and the 6800K was for video editing content. Because I wouldn't have built it if, it if I didn't have a YouTube channel. I mean, that's, that's what it existed for. But I had that 4770K for three years. I typically don't keep machines for very long. But I also have kids that can take parts. You know, it's, it's hand-me-down. My wife gets a machine. My kids get machines. Um, so you can kind of play, you know, roll the parts downhill and everybody's got a computer. Uh, earlier this year, for example, I upgraded my mom's computer. She now currently has a Ryzen 5 3600X with 32 gigs of RAM. And all she ever does with her computer is Facebook. So she would argue and say, I do more with my computer than that. 
Yeah, you Facebook and you email and you print pictures, Mom. I mean, I love you, but you're you're a pretty casual user, which is fine. So one of the reasons I went with a, with the seventy nine fifty X is AM five. My hope is to upgrade it to either Zen five or Zen six, whatever the best final chip is. If we do get confirmation that Zen 6 is coming to AM5, which is not confirmed, but if it does, I'll probably skip Zen 5 because once your machine's working and stable, I hate messing with it. So I'll wait to the end of AM5 when we start to get an inclination of when AM6 is coming. And my goal is to just put the best last chip that will ever exist for AM5 and see if I can't get five plus years out of that machine. We'll see. That's my goal. Um, Spoon Hunter is not wrong. Chrome will figure out how to use 75% of 192 gigs of RAM. Charles says, what does Charles say? You guys are funny.